Droidy Droidy on my right. When should I give my review of Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White? Now it is. Welcome to Teacup for One. My name is Matt and I have two degrees and today I'm going to live in the past and do my long overdue review of one of the best experiences I had on my recent trip to Walt Disney World which was not in a theme park but in fact in a restaurant but not just any restaurant I would say one of the most magical restaurants on property I am of course talking about storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White but that is a mouthful to say the least so for the rest of this video I'm just gonna call it the Snow White dinner <laughs> I'm gonna talk you through the entire experience from start to finish and just for fun, I'm going to sprinkle in some fun facts about the 1937 animated classic Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And that's mostly because I did a lot of research before going to this character meal because that's who I am. First, I'm going to toot my own horn and talk about the Disney Bound I threw together for this dinner. I actually got some really great pictures of this Disney Bound because before dinner I went to Disney Springs and not a lot of people know this, but there is a photo pass photo studio. So if you pay for the memory maker, you can get a ton of pictures taken for free. Well, I mean, minus the money you paid for the memory maker. And I noticed that they had a poison apple prop. So obviously I was gonna get pictures taken. Show the pictures. After my photo shoot at Disney Springs, I hopped on one of the Disney buses to Disney's Wilderness Lodge to check in for my 8.30 reservation. They were running a little behind, but that actually turned out to be an amazing thing because in the area before you uh, make your way into the restaurant, in the check-in area, they have a mini gallery of Disney fine art solely dedicated to Snow White. The uh, curator was actually on site and he told me that this was the largest collection of specifically commissioned Snow White art in the world just because of this character dining experience. And one thing that I noticed looking at the collection was that there was one scene that was just continuously represented by different artists through even different mediums. There were paintings, even sculpture work. And that scene is the seven dwarfs walking home across the log while singing Hi Ho. Seamus Culhane, who was the supervising animator on that sequence, said that that was one of the toughest assignments in his entire animation career. Because think about it, it looks relatively straightforward. You just have the seven dwarfs walking across the screen. But he had to painstakingly make sure that all seven of them were walking in time to the music while moving in a way that was befitting of their specific character and their characterizations. Not to mention the fact that Dopey is moving out of time with everyone at the end of the line, and it's all being viewed from a really weird perspective slash angle. And it lasts for less than a minute of screen time. But whether or not that's something you notice or can appreciate when watching the film, that single image has become so strongly ingrained just in the fabric of Disney animation that I think it was worth the effort. Anyway, I, I haven't even talked about the meal yet. So after taking in all the beautiful art, I was finally brought to my table. And when you enter the restaurant, the theming is gorgeous. There are twinkle lights everywhere. And even right on the center of your table, there is a twinkle light leaf platform thing. My table has a tree on it. Just the attention to detail and just having the magic expand out in the space and then reduce right to the intimacy of your own table, like that is Disney magic at its finest. Now because the entire meal is themed around storybook dining, your menu is brought to you in the form of a leather bound storybook. This is how the meal works. The appetizers and desserts are listed as shared. So you have your shared appetizers and shared desserts. But I did look in advance, you can enjoy this experience as a single diner because ultimately they're just on a prefix menu or as I like to say, a prixie fixie menu. So you have your set appetizers that come out as well as your set desserts and you get to order off the menu a la carte for your main course. And while you're dining, the characters come around and greet you, and not only do they greet you, they have like mini flash mobs that happen throughout the meal. There was a high ho sing along, snow white lettuce and whistle while you work, there was a processional for the entrance of the evil queen. <laughs> it was so cool. Also, they don't advertise this, but soft drinks are included. I drank so much Diet Coke. <laughs> okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Prixie Fixie appetizer course. Everything is brought to you in small portions. It's almost like a tasting menu. And for the appetizers, you get a mushroom bisque, 
a wicked shrimp cocktail and the hunter's terrain first terrain or terrain i'm gonna say terrain even if that's wrong because it's like hunters hunt on the terrain my favorite was the mushroom bisque the temperature was a little low i'm not sure if it was meant to be served as a cold soup or not but regardless the flavor was awesome and there was a little crispy mushroom on top that was great and it was served in a mini cauldron Next was the Wicked Shrimp Cocktail. I only took a few nibbles of this because I have a family history of like awful seafood allergies and I didn't want this to be the time and place where I discovered that I'm also allergic to shellfish. So I just took a couple bites. I didn't die and it tasted pretty good. So if you like shrimp and if you like cocktails and if you like the musical Wicked, you will like the Wicked Shrimp Cocktail. And then the sleeper hit of the appetizer course, the Hunter's Terrain. All the menu said was that it was chicken, black truffle, stone fruit preserve, and house-made pickles. I like all those things on their own, but I still had no idea what a terrain was, so I had to look it up, and it is apparently a loaf of force meat like a pate. So all of a sudden it sounded really gross, but happy to report, it tasted delightful. I don't even know what a terrain is, but it's amazing. Pause, character stop. So Snow White came around to greet me while I was enjoying the appetizer course. Fun fact about Snow White, while the film was being animated, the ladies of the ink and paint department, that was the department that colored in the animation cells, applied actual cosmetic makeup to the cells to give Snow White her characteristic rosy cheeks, and it created a quality to her animation that has never been seen again, really. Another fun fact, Snow White's voice actor, Adriana Casalotti, didn't know that she was working on the world's first animated feature film. She knew that she was hired by Walt Disney to do some voice work and she was just told that it would be a slightly longer project. She assumed it was going to be maybe like 20 minutes instead of 10 and then at the premiere she saw a ton of celebrities on the red carpet and realized wait this might be something bigger than I realized. <laughs> Another fun fact about Snow White, there are rumors that Adriana Casalotti was actually contractually obligated to never work again after Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Uh, this hasn't officially been confirmed however radio host Jack Benny did say that he wanted to use Adriana for his radio show but Walt Disney specifically said I'm sorry I can't allow you to do that I don't want to ruin the illusion of Snow White. That's not a very fun fact, is it? Oh, well, moving on. Yeah. Like I mentioned, non-alcoholic beverages were included in the pre-fixed price of the meal. However, I decided to indulge and I ordered one of the specialty cocktails, the Smoking Mirror. Because what else could I get when I was wearing this awesome shirt? The Smoking Mirror cocktail was Johnny Walker Black, Wildberry Lime, and get this, Rosemary Smoke. Play the clip. All right. Whoa! So, I mean, obviously I ordered it for the novelty, but it legitimately tasted great. If you're someone who really loves the smell of campfire, this is like drinking that smell, but not poison. And whilst enjoying the cocktail, I met two of our favorite dwarfs, Dopey and Grumpy. Fun fact, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is actually spelled Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Dwarfs instead of dwarves. Dwarves. See, for a long time, I thought it was dwarves. But the only reason we really spell dwarves or say dwarves with a VS is because of J.R.R. Tolkien. Who knew? I mean, most of you probably did, but I only found out when I was doing research for this video and for this dinner, so I think that's fun. Next up, the main course arrived, and I went for the Royal Prime Rib. It was cooked medium rare to perfection. It came with a Yorkshire pudding that was like the size of two of my fists. It was incredible. And midway through my meal, I received my official summons to meet the Queen herself. Fun fact about the Evil Queen. The Evil Queen was voiced by actress Lucille Laverne. However, when they were looking for an actress to provide the voice of the Queen post-transformation when she's in her disguise as the witch, Lucille Laverne said, I can do that too. And to prove it, she took out her teeth and then provided the spine-chilling voice we know now. She took out her teeth. I mean, that's commitment. Now, Snow White, Dopey, and Grumpy will circulate the restaurant and come to you. However, you need to be specifically invited to meet the queen. 
Meeting her was great. She commented on how I was the only one who was properly dressed to meet her. And when I got her to sign my children's menu, yes, I got a children's menu, but just to get people to autograph it, she commented on her disdain for the fact that Snow White stole the best spot. It is also noteworthy that there will be a photo pass photographer on site when you meet the queen. However, when you meet Snow White, Dopey, and Grumpy, you have to take pictures yourself on your own devices. And after my meeting with the queen, I finished my prime rib and then it was time for dessert. The dessert course starts off with the following. First, the miner's treasures. This was super unique. It was sponge cake with panna cotta and chocolate coated gems at the bottom. It was tasty, delicious, theming was delightful, solid win. Next, the poison apple. So that was like a white chocolate mousse with a sour center made to look like an apple. And finally, the highlight dessert for myself, gooseberry pie. The only reason I know what gooseberries are is because of Snow White, the film. Like That's the pie that she's baking before the old uh, witch shows up with the apple saying, no, the men folk prefer apple pie over gooseberry. I don't know. I, I don't know why she's Catherine Hepburn. But dessert didn't stop there because we had the grand finale, the hunter's gift to the queen. The brilliant thing with the hunter's gift to the queen is that it is so much greater than the sum of its parts. It is presented to you in this beautiful encasement. It's opened, surrounded by dry ice, and then ceremoniously dropped on your plate. It was like, I'm never gonna have popcorn served to me on dry ice again. Like that was a once in a lifetime thing. It was so cool. All in all, I cannot recommend the Snow White dinner enough. The food is independently delicious. The theming is impeccable. The character interactions are top notch. And all of these things just tie together to create a beautifully unified experience celebrating debatably the most important film in the Walt Disney Company's history. So if you like good food, if you like Disney movies, if you like princesses, if you like dining experiences, <laughs> you will like this. All right, folks, that concludes another episode of Teacup for One. I would love to know in the comment section down below what other film you would like to see get the storybook dining treatment. For myself, I'm going to vote Hercules. Imagine a delicious gourmet Greek meal being served while you meet Hercules, Meg, Pain and Panic, and then you get a special invitation to the underworld to meet Hades, and all the while the muses can be like appearing around singing, you can have a Hercules Zero to Hero sing-along. Oh, I should be an Imagineer. Who do I call to make that happen? Thanks for joining us today, everyone. Please don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. All you need to do is click on my face. Thanks for joining us again today, everyone. Matt out. Go away.